Hey guys, Troy here with Hacker Warehouse, and in today's episode of Tradecraft, we'll be updating our trusty dusty HackRF to enable ultra wideband suite functions. Check it out. Every now and then some new code comes along that just completely redefines how a piece of hardware can be used. And that's exactly what happened with some recent code dropped over at the HackRF GitHub. A new HackRF firmware function called HackRF Sweep, written by Mike Osmond, Dominic Spill, and Mike Walters, author of Inspectrum, enables ultra wideband spectrum monitoring at an outstanding speed of 6 gigahertz per second. This piece of open source awesomeness allows us to use the HackRF in a new suite of applications, like ultra wideband spectrum monitoring noise hunting, and signal safaris of all kinds. Now, getting the new function up and running can be a little tricky. Although it can be installed on Windows, we installed it on Linux for this example by following these steps to get the HackRF updated and the software running. We'll first update the firmware, then install the software, then demo using the sweep function to find some signals, and we'll even show you how to localize those signals using a near-field probe. Let's start by updating the firmware. Step one. If you already have a working HackRF build environment, you can use the commands below. Otherwise, we recommend you download the GNU Radio Live DVD environment to update your HackRF. Two, download and install the new HackRF firmware release from the GitHub. Three, follow the instructions for updating the SPY Flash firmware at the HackRF wiki. If the environment is working correctly, you should be able to run this HackRF underscore SPY Flash command from the firmware bin directory. After running the command, unplug the HackRF and plug it back in. It's recommended to update the CPLD as well. Be sure you update libhackrf and hackrf-tools first. Run this hackrf underscore cpld jtag command to update the CPLD. After a few seconds, the LEDs should start blinking. Once that happens, unplug the HackRF and plug it back in to reset. If you have issues, be sure to check out the updating firmware section on the wiki for some helpful hints. Four, verify the HackRF is communicating properly after the update by running HackRF underscore info. You should see a response from the HackRF. If not, try running rmod HackRF. Once the HackRF is responding, run the sweep command by typing HackRF underscore sweep. You should see a response indicating the HackRF sweep is working. And if so, we can continue on to install QSpectrum Analyzer. Install Mike Osmond's fork of QSpectrum Analyzer, which supports the new HackRF sweep. You'll need to install some dependencies, depending on your version of Linux. So check out the GitHub link for exact details on the install. Once the dependencies are installed, you should be able to open the program from a terminal by typing QSpectrum Analyzer. Once you have QSpectrum Analyzer running, you're going to need to set up the program for sweeping. Go to File, Settings, set Backend to HackRF Sweep, set Executable to HackRF Sweep, leave Waterfall History, Size, Device Index, and Sample Rate to their default settings. Click OK. Notice the start and stop frequencies have automatically been set to 0 MHz to 6 GHz. Now click Start in the top right control section. You should now see the Spectrum Analyzer graph come to life. The HackRF is now sweeping 6 GHz per second. Notice when you move the mouse over the graph, the marker will automatically track your position, indicating frequency and power. The fast-moving main curve shows signals as the HackRF is sweeping. It may take a few sweeps to see all the signals in our area. If we want to catch all the transmissions nearby, we can select the Max Hold checkbox. Let the sweep run for a few minutes, then look for the strongest signals. If we place the mouse on the peak of the strongest signals, we can see what frequencies those are. Take note of these frequencies because we can later use the near-field probe to track them down to a specific location. Let's demonstrate. We've previously demonstrated the process of signal monitoring by having an idea of what frequency our target was on. With HackRF Sweep, you can skip the device recon. Instead, we just need to be near our target to be able to pick up its signal out of the noise. This is my drone. There are many like it, but this one is mine. Now, can we guess what frequency it's on? Maybe 900, 2.4, or 5.8? Well, 
or maybe we could look up the FCC ID of the transmitter and find the frequency like we showed in our last HackRF demo. Well, with HackRF Sweep, you don't need to do any of that. Just get near the target and run the sweep with QSpectrum Analyzer. You'll notice the spectrum display and how the most powerful signal is right here. If we place the marker over the peak of that signal, we'll notice the cursor tells us the exact frequency. To see if this is our drone's frequency, we can keep the pointer on the peak amplitude and turn off the drone to see if the signal on the main curve disappears. Got it! If we turn the drone back on, we can use the markers to note the signal power and then use the antenna to localize this particular signal to see if it's getting stronger as we get close and weaker as we move far away. Now, this works for the general vicinity of the transmitter, but sometimes you may want to know exactly where the signal's coming from. If that's the case, then let's use something called a near-field probe. A near-field probe is used to measure the near field of a transmitter, which is defined as roughly one-tenth the wavelength of a signal. The probe is designed to pick up either the magnetic or electric components of an RF signal. The small size of the probe allows us to hunt down signals on a PCB board down to the component level. In this demo, we'll be using an RF Explorer near-field probe. Just plug the SMA connector into the antenna jack on the HackRF and place the probe near the target while watching the HackRF sweep function on the Q-Spectrum Analyzer display. If the signal in question increases when you place the probe nearby, you know that you've found the target's frequency. You can further isolate where the signal is physically coming from at a component level by slowly scanning the probe over the target's PCB and finding the strongest point. Another fun application is going on what I like to call a signal safari. That is, taking the HackRF and exploring until you find an interesting antenna in the wild. Approach the antenna, then run the sweep command for a few seconds to a few minutes and see if you can catch the transmission. Note the frequency, then go look it up to determine what the purpose and the source might be. Keep in mind, you'll often have many high power signals in the area, which create many peaks, especially over a bandwidth this wide. Be sure to put your phone in airplane mode while you're sweeping to avoid any false positives from nearby transmitters. With a little practice, you'll soon be using the HackRF to find and identify a whole new world of signals. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Tradecraft. Put any feedback or questions in the comments. And until next time, remember, please keep it between the laws. <laughs>